In part one of my guide to making lipstick, we're going to cover bullet lipstick, including a clear base that you can use for your own colour changing version. This is part one of a two part series that will accompany an ebook detailing my formulas and lots of information on ingredients and how to formulate both bullet and liquid lipsticks with them. The ebook will be released to purchase when part two of this series comes out and it will be linked in the description below. Uh, patrons will be able to claim this copy free. If you'd like to become a patron and access all my other exclusive content, including a further lipstick formula, two exclusive formulas every month and get guaranteed replies to messages, then the link is below. Formulas shown in these videos and in the ebook are shown as examples only. They're to be used as a guide for your own experiments. Um, I've been creating them for the purpose of sharing on Patreon and YouTube. I don't make any claims as to my qualifications or the efficacy of the formulations which are listed for entertainment purposes and I accept no responsibility for how you use them. I'm self-taught and I offer these videos from my years of knowledge and experience in making my own cosmetic products. So remember to do your own research, experiments, adjustments and tests before using, gifting or selling any cosmetic products. A basic lipstick will be made up of wax, butter, oil and colour pigment. The consistency and efficacy of the final product will be determined by tweaking the type of each of these that you use and their percentages, along with extra additions such as silicones, esters, SPF enhancers and preservatives. Whether you make a liquid or a solid lipstick will depend on how much of the above ingredients you want to use and in what ratios. In part one, I'm going to focus on solid bullet lipsticks. Note that I'm not sharing the exact formulas in this video as those will be available in the ebook when part two is available to watch. Okay, so we'll start with a very basic one and this will just be your oils, butters, waxes and your pigment pretty much so we need to weigh out all of our oils butters and waxes of choice and pop them in a heat proof beaker i'm just going to stir them around to combine them a little bit and then we're going to heat them in a bain marie and this will be to melt all the butters and waxes down don't forget to keep any cool down ingredients to the side because you don't want to be heating them up because they can become unstable so we'll heat this in our bain marie you know what this is by now one to two inches of water in a pan and then just put that on a low to medium heat and let it melt down slowly in the meantime we're going to prepare our mold you can find these lipstick molds easily online and all you need to do is just get some oil. I'm using uh, castor oil here, but you can use any oil and just make sure that you get it coated in the oil inside. And this is to make sure that your bullet lipsticks don't stick and that you'll be able to remove them from the mold easily without breaking them. So make sure you get in every little bit of it as much as you need. Once you've oiled the mould, you can pop it together and they just have these little metal bits that just slot together like that. And then you just need to pop the top on when you're ready. And then that just slots in there. And then you use these screws on the side to tighten it all up to make sure that it doesn't come apart. When you're ready to unmould them, you'd simply take the top part off and then the whole lipstick will come out in your lipstick container and then you can just take the mold apart to thoroughly clean it afterwards. Let's check how our ingredients are melting down. Some waxes will take a lot longer to melt down than others so bear that in mind when choosing them. So while that's melting down for our first one let's start on our second one and this is going to be a matte 
bullet lipstick. Certain ingredients will help to make the lipstick matte, but the base is usually the same. Lots of oils, butters and waxes. And then it's the cool down ingredient additions that we add along with the pigment choices um, that will help to make it a matte lipstick rather than a shiny one. So we're going to put this in the water bath as well, uh, noting <laughs> exactly where we've put it so we don't confuse the two. And then we'll get started on our third one, which will be our Moisture Bullet Lipstick. Needless to say, same kind of ingredients, but focus on things that are moisturising and nourishing for the lips uh, in both the melted phase and the cool down phase. And obviously we have our pigment there as well. And then we'll pop that waxes and oils on to melt down with the others. Note that there are various kinds of pigments you can use when making lipsticks. You can use mica for a more sort of shimmery, translucent effect. You can use lakes and oxides and uh, titanium dioxide. There's lots of different choices. Just make sure that they're lip safe in your country because some countries don't allow the use of certain pigments and if you are in the USA you will need FDA approved lake pigments. So now we're going to move on to getting this prepared. This is our silicon based bullet lipstick. So there are some oils and waxes in there but the focus is on uh, silicon based ingredients. So we've got two heated phases, the silicons and then the oils and waxes. And then of course we've got our pigment and cool down phase. So we'll get this started because silicons can take a while to melt down. So we want to keep that melting on a low to medium heat under agitation and that way it doesn't clump up and uh, we'll get to work on our first one which is now off the heat. This was our basic bullet lipstick if you're keeping up with me. <laughs> this was just oils, butters and waxes and cool down phase and pigment so we'll mix all that in and get that one poured. If you have a homogenizer or a sheer mixer, you can use that for this. However, it does make a mess and I don't like the cleanup, so I tend to do this by hand, especially just for the purpose of experimenting. But it's completely up to you. The trick is to ensure that you've grinded your pigments to a fine powder first, uh, especially with oxides and lakes, as you don't want big clumps in your finished product. Now our second experiment is ready. This is our matte bullet lipstick and we're just going to take the temperature. I didn't mention this before, but obviously if you're adding cool down ingredients, you need to make sure that it is 40 degrees C or below. I'd be as close to 40 as possible for lipstick because you do want it to still be liquid and you want some working time. So once that's 40 degrees, you can add your cool down ingredients like I have done here and mix, 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 and then you can pour it into your mould. Don't worry if the moulds overflow a little bit at the beginning because we can scrape that top layer off later. I'm jarring up the excess for use later. And here's our third one, our moisturising lipstick. This is all melted down. Again, take the temperature, let it come to 40 degrees C, and then you can add your cool down phase ingredients and your pigment and then just give that a good mix and then you can pour it into your mold. The trick is just making sure that you mix it really really thoroughly so the pigment is evenly dispersed. And this can take some time if you're not using a homogenizer or a sheer mixer. And then just pour into your mold and the oil within the mold will prevent it sticking when you remove the mold top. So we're still waiting for our silicon based lipstick to melt down. So we'll start with our velvet matte. Again, this is your base ingredients of butters, oils, waxes, and then there's some silicons in there and then some mattifying and velvetifying ingredients. 
there's certain things that you can add that have a really, really good uh, way of giving this effect when you've got a finished product. So we've put that on the heat and now you've just seen me take the silicon based one off the heat and we've added our butters and waxes to our silicon ingredients and we're mixing them round to combine. And then we need to let it cool to 40 degrees again and then we can add our cool down ingredients and our pigment. And then just like before, just give it a good mix to make sure everything is thoroughly combined and then you're ready to pour. If you're doing a number of experiments like me here, then it's a good idea to label things. If you do have a dry erase marker, then you can write on your beakers and your mould. I didn't have one handy, but that is a good tip. And now the last one we're going to be doing while we wait for the velvet to uh, melt down is our clear bullet lipstick with the idea of making a base so that you can make colour changing lipsticks. So I'm going to put that on the heat to melt down and in the meantime let's finish off our velvet matte. So we've got our waxes and our silicones and we're going to pour the silicones into the waxes and give it a good mix again and then let it cool to 40 degrees C before adding our cool down phase ingredients and our pigment. Remember to check on anything you've got on the heat. Then we'll just finish off the velvet matte by adding in the cool down and then the pigment and we'll get that mixed and poured. Our clear lipstick is melted down nicely. To make clear lipstick, you basically need to use clear ingredients, but I've picked a certain selection to keep it nice and moisturizing. The idea being that you can create this base to melt down again later, um, just to liquid, not too much, because you don't want to hamper the uh, cool down ingredients. And then you can add a certain type of pigment and then that will produce the colour change when it hits your lips. It's basically all to do with pH. Although lipstick doesn't have a pH, the saliva in your mouth obviously does. So when this pigment comes into contact with that moisture, it changes colour. However, there's only a certain type of pigment that does it and I explain all about that in the ebook. But I'm going to give you a little demo of how that works. Uh, a bit later. But first of all, leave your lipsticks to set. Uh, if you can do that in the fridge dedicated for cosmetics, then do that. And then you can take them out of the mould. You see the top comes off very easily, usually, if you've oiled it well enough. And then you just push your container onto the bit that sticks out and you can pull your lipsticks out just like that. You will get breakage with some of them don't worry about it, you'll always have the chance to melt that back down. You can happily melt stuff down to about 40 degrees C so that it's liquid enough to pour again without compromising the cool down ingredients. So don't freak out if any break, it's perfectly normal with things like this. There'll always be one section that you haven't oiled enough. So just go with it. And uh, here's the finished product. Here are all the finished lipsticks. Guess which one I broke in the mould. <laughs> Can you see the wonky one? <laughs> So 
So here's the clear lipstick and I'm going to give you a little sort of demo of how that works in terms of colour changing when you add the right pigment. So here I've got two little beakers of water. This one is just normal water, so the pH is around seven. And then I have my other beaker where I've added citric acid to bring down the pH. So you can see we have a pH of between basically naught and one there. What this does is mimic the fact that the pigment will have no pH in a lipstick because lipsticks are anhydrous. But when it hits the water at a pH of seven or saliva from our mouth, it will turn a shade of pink. What I'm badly demoing here is the fact that in a low pH, it will be clear and in a higher pH, it will be pink. I've shown this quite crudely because I don't actually have the right pigments myself in stock. Um, but if you did, that's the kind of thing you'd see if you did a little test with water. I will have information on this pigment in the ebook, though it can be quite hard to find. Part two should be coming next week with liquid lipsticks. Until then, please don't forget to like and subscribe, add a comment below, and look out for the ebook link next week when I've aired part two.